Welcome to another edition of Sports Writers on the Web. I'm Harold Wood, Sports Editor Don O'Brien, alongside Max Schuckman and Blake Topmeyer, getting you ready for another weekend full of action on the high school and college scenes, guys. Uh, week six of the high school football season already, if you can believe that. Uh, for uh, Quincy Notre Dame and Quincy High School, they both are at home this week. Chuck, we'll go with Notre Dame first. The Great Ghosts come to town. That's right. Killer Coffee, IBC, and QD. I don't know if it's the first time they've ever played, but as certainly. As far as I know, it's the first time ever. First time as conference foes. What right. does Friday night look like for the Raiders? And do they have enough guys standing straight up that they can play the game? <laughs> and that's the big question. You know, who's going to run the ball for Notre Dame? Uh, they're down to their fourth string tailback going into this week. Uh, Nick Wyman out indefinitely after suffering broken ribs and a lacerated liver in last week's victory over Peoria Central. He goes on the shelf along with Luke Hincamper, who's on the shelf with a collarbone injury. Chad Downs is out for the season with a broken ankle. So. I don't know. Are you available Friday night? I no. I'd have to do desk or else. Top. I can suit up. Okay. Well, <laughs> Bill kind of may need you to. Uh, right now, it looks like Connor Ober will be the one to take, getting a bulk of the carries. Uh, Blaine Wilson, a sophomore who uh, looked good against Peoria Notre Dame, struggled against the size up front against Peoria Central last week, uh, but he's gonna probably gonna get some carries. After that, who knows? Because now you're digging into your JV squad deep into your JV squad because they've had some injuries as well. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they line up Friday night. Outside of not having anybody to run the football, is this, a big, is this team pose a big threat to Quincy United? I, I think it does. Uh, it's really good. We're going to see just how good this defense is against our This defense has been very good this year. Um, and after last week's victory over Peoria Central where they gave up seven points, a 15-7 victory, I said it's, I think, the best defensive front they've had since 2004, and that was a team that made it to the state semifinals. The Grey Ghosts run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Their tailback has over 800 yards, 13 touchdowns, leads the Mid-State Six in both categories. Their quarterback ran for 100 yards in last week's victory over Manuel. Uh, he was coming off an ankle injury and still produced. You know, they've, they're averaging 38 points a game over their last four games. They're a talented offensive team. Notre Dame is a very talented defensive team, but they've lost their middle linebacker in Wyman. They've lost another linebacker in Thompson, another linebacker in Hencamper. So we've talked about tailback position. Same goes for linebacker. They've got some questions to answer this week. Notre Dame's got some questions to answer. Quincy High School, Blake Topmeyer, still has a bunch of questions to answer. Uh, mainly, can they get on track in the Big Six after a couple tough losses? Right, yeah, and I think the, the thing with Quincy High is they did open with the two toughest teams in the Big Six with Allman and then Moline. Played well in the first half of both games, really played well for three quarters against Alleman. And now the question is, can they start playing good in the second half? Opponents this year have dominated them in the second half. They got East Moline coming to town this weekend. East Moline, of course, they start the non-conference 0-3 and, and then win two in a row in big six play. So I think it's two teams where we're, we're not really sure who they are. You know, the Blue Devils have looked good at times this year times they haven't looked too good. Same way with East Moline. They were, I mean, their offense did nothing in three non-conference games, and then their offense is averaging nearly 50 points per game in big six play. So I think it's going to be a pretty telling game for both sides. I think East Moline actually needs a, a little more because they still have Allman and Moline on the schedule. Uh, but having said that, the Blue Devils don't want to slip into a situation where they're two and four and need to win out than to have any hope for playoffs. Is the onus Friday night on the Blue Devils offense or its defense? I think it's on the offense. Uh, too many times this year, QHS has had to rely on its defense. For the most part, the defense has come through. Now, they did allow 31 to Moline last weekend, but still, Moline's a better offensive team than they are a defensive team. QHS scored 17 points last week. Before that, they scored seven against Alleman. Really, they haven't had a, a huge offensive game since week one against Alton. And many of those scores were set up by the defense. So the offense needs to get better, um, and, and that's going to have to start with the offensive line and the backfield. QHS is even more of a running team this year, I think, than, than even they were last year. And the O-line has to open up some holes, and, and they got to start getting some balanced attack in the backfield. So many times it's been Malik Robbins. Last week it was Mike Davis, but he had no support. So it seems like week in, week out, it's just one of those running backs who have a big night. Now they need to start getting two or three of those guys going off. 
gone over all the Quincy, the two Quincy games for you. Any other games, guys, in the area this week that's, uh, that, that are worth football-wise looking into? I think there are two. I think one is a battle of state-ranked teams, Brown County against Jacksonville Route. You had number four route against number five Brown County. Um, again, WIVC seems to be loaded, that division, North Division. This is one of those games that will decide who wins the title or not, um, you know, along with Triopia in that right. mix. Then I think you've got Macomb Illini West is a big game. Yeah, yeah, Macomb Illini West, both teams sitting at two and three. Illini West got a, a big win, or an important win last week against Pittsfield, um, when in, what was it, 50 to 35, or some, yeah, some high correct. scoring shootout like that. I think the question for Illini West is can their defense step up? It's two weeks in a row now that they've allowed big point totals because two weeks ago they had the game against Central Southeastern. Last week, even though the offense showed up, Pittsfield rolled up a lot of points against them. I think McCombs probably the favorite in this one, but this is really a game that, that Illini West, I think, almost has to have for their playoff chances because if they slip to two and four, they still have Sherrard at the end of the schedule, which is going to be a tough one. I'll throw one out from the Missouri side of the river down in America's hometown on Friday night. Hannibal plays host to Boonville. That, uh, that game is, for all intents and purposes, for the North Central Missouri Conference Championship. Boonville comes in 4-0 in the league. Hannibal 2-0. Hannibal's won 21 straight conference games. Three and three wins in a row since they low the season uh, with losses to uh, QND and uh, Farmington. Uh, I think Hannibal uh, will continue a streak in the North Central Missouri Conference. I think Boonville uh, will be better. They, they, they only uh, won 28-7 in Hannibal over there last year, but I think Hannibal's got a good chance at uh, winning that one on the well, I almost picked Boonville, but I couldn't couldn't pick Hannibal against the streak. You can't go against the, <laughs> the Pirates, especially when they're Pirate dogs in the stands. That's true. You couldn't go against the Pirates stands. either way. No, Pirates well, won't Yes, so yes. Pirates won't matchup win. of two Pirates. A uh, couple more things before we head off uh, real quick, Chuck. Uh, Quincy Ice Soccer comes into the meat of its schedule, including a big tournament this weekend down St. Louis. Yeah, going to the Gateway Classic for the, this is the seventh annual tournament. 60 teams from 13 states convening in St. Louis for this tournament. And if you look at what Quincy High is up against, they're taking on a team out of New York City in the opening round, the Beacon School, a team 5-0, and defending uh, Class A public school champs from the city. Um, there's a, Their 18 bracket combined has a winning percentage of better than 800. So it, it's a loaded tournament, and coming off a big win la, uh, Tuesday night against East Moline. Um, they'll, they'll find out whether they're going to be able to compete with the Edwardsvilles that they'll see in the regional. Tough score for Quincy High's soccer team, for Quincy High's volleyball team, Blake, still undefeated. When we sat down here a couple weeks ago, we said, when is Quincy High going to have its first loss? You pointed to this weekend as being a possibility. Yeah, and I still think that's probably going to happen. They play O'Fallon tonight. Um, I think they beat O'Fallon. Then they're going to go into this Belleville East Invitational. A lot of good teams in that event. Now, Quincy High is seeded three out of 18. So there's there's a chance they could run through this thing and undefeated. Uh, but there's Narex Hall is in this um, in this invitational, very good team from, from the Missouri side. Breeze Modern Day, um, one of the top teams in class 3A, maybe the top team in class 3A uh, is in this event. Uh, there's, this is, it's an event pretty loaded with talent, um, but I think QHS needs to play well because this is more the type of talent they're gonna see in the postseason. I think they do play well, but I think somewhere along the line, they, they probably lose one this weekend. We'll have coverage of all that in the Aero League this weekend. Also coming up this weekend, you got the Tom Oakley Cross Country Invitational, DA Waver Golf, we got that, Culver's at home, homecoming for them, QU's on the road. We'll have all that and more for you this weekend in the Herald League and on Wig.com. For Matt Shuckman, Blake Topmeyer, I'm Donald Bryan. Thanks for watching the Sports Rares on the web.